Hello everyone, this is Monica Lupion. I'm the instructor of the summer course CE 318 Heat and Mass Transfer. So today I'm going to go over the general equation of the steady state conduction. We discussed a very simplified version of the steady state conduction equation in previous lectures, but today I'm going to go over a more analytical uh, development of the equations. We're going to see all the different terms and also some of the simplifications that we can apply. So let me go over first an introduction about um, steady state conduction. Then we're going to focus on the differential equations of heat transfer, particularly conduction. You can read more about that in chapter 16, although uh, you know, the material that I cover in classes is what is going to be covering the quizzes and exams as well. But nevertheless, it could be uh, quite beneficial for you if you want to take um, an overview, and especially if you want to take a closer look to the examples, including in your textbook. And then we're going to cover two different sections from the chapter 17 in your textbook. One is related to the, the critical thickness of insulation, how the how can we incorporate the heat generation in the equation for conduction and then the fins which are something that is called extended surfaces or fin and we'll talk more about that in the next lecture will correspond to uh, the section three and as i mentioned we will talk about that in the next lecture and finally a summary so let me go first over introduction if you remember when we talk about the three main mechanisms related to heat transfer, we discuss about conduction, convection, and radiation, and the different mechanism um, of heat transfer, depending on whether if we have uh, physical contact, which is conduction or convection, also some uh, fluid in motion, which is convection, or if the uh, heat is converted into electromagnetic waves, and then we don't need to have any kind of physical contact for the heat to transfer. Associated to that, uh, let me put a pointer, we define different equations. And in the case of conduction, this is a very simplified equation of the differential equation for conduction. Uh, today, uh, we're going to expand more about this equation. Now we're going to see the different elements and how can we get from the general equation to this very simplified version of the equation for conduction. Uh, in addition to conduction, we also discuss the equation of convection that, um, well, you have here is a, a function of the convective heat transfer coefficient h, and we will talk about this h and the convection equation quite a lot in the next lectures. And finally, radiation. Well, I mentioned that we're not going to talk about radiation that much. This is a general equation that we we'll also will we'll define when we discuss about radiation, very briefly, as I mentioned. Also, an important aspect that we discussed when we define the thermal resistance is that the, geo the geometry really matters in the case of conduction because there is an integration here and we need to integrate the function of the temperature with the position over that particular geometry. So when we define the thermal resistance, we really need to pay attention to the geometry because we have different expressions of the thermal resistance R depending on the geometry. And we discuss with different examples. A flat, uh, a flat slab, a hollow cylinder of a hollow sphere. And we define the values of the thermal resistance R for all these three different geometries. In addition to that, we learn how to apply the analogy of the electrical circuit into heat transfer, and we define how to solve the problems when we have series, in parallel, and when we have a combination of both. Okay, so this is what we covered so far. And now, as I mentioned, we're going to go well, a little bit back. Uh, we're going to forget that we know the simplified equation for conduction, and we're going to focus on the general differential equation of heat transfer applied in the case of conduction. So if you remember um, from your uh, 
classes related to um, uh, transport for momentum, we you define how the momentum uh, transfer can change, uh, and you have to consider different uh, considerations here. One is the dependence with time, and then the position. Another element, if there is some kind of, in the case of heat transfer, heat generation. So we're gonna use the same equation that you already define when you study momentum transfer, okay? And we're gonna apply an analogy to solve it for heat transfer. If you want to refresh your memory, although you don't really need it, but just in case, if you want to, you know, if you don't remember anything about momentum transfer, I suggest you take a look to the chapter number nine in your textbook. This is completely out of the scope of this course. This is something that you should know already. Uh, what is important for me in this course is that you know that we're going to take the momentum transfer equation and we're going to use an analogy and we're going to get from that the differential equation for heat transfer. So what is the general expression for heat conduction? So the dependence of the temperature with time, you see the parallelism between this equation and this equation. So the dependence of the temperature with time is equal to a parameter that is defined as alpha thermal diffusivity, which is a function of the thermal conductivity, the density and the heat capacity. Okay, all together we combine these three parameters, and this is defined as alpha, thermal diffusivity, multiply by the uh, variation of the temperature of the position, plus a second term, which is related to the heat generation. So if we have heat generation inside the element, we need to consider that heat generation, and also, um, divided in this case by the density and the heat capacity. So we can say that the general expression for heat conduction is that the uh, dt over time is equal to the thermal diffusivity dt over the position plus the term related to the heat generation. Okay, we're going to assume that there is no fluid motion, so we we're not going to consider any convection process here. So all heat is transferred by conduction. Again, we forget about convection. This is only applied for conduction. We're also going to see on that the thermal conductivity k is going to be constant. So there is no variation of k with the temperature. That's why this term here, which depends on k can go out of the integration when we do the integration of this differential equation. And also, we're not going to consider any kind of dissipation uh, of the energy. Okay, we're going to assume that all heat will be transferred um, through the element by conduction. Okay, now let's see there are different uh, particular scenarios, so something particular uh, conditions that we can allow, that it will allow us to simplify this general equation. The first one is when there is no heat sources. So if, let me go back, there is no heat sources, so this term here can be canceled. And therefore, we have that the dependence of the temperature with time is equal to the thermal conductivity the Laplacian of the temperature. And this is called the Fourier second law. This is a very common uh, case when we don't have any heat source. The second uh, condition or the second situation is when we have heat source, but there is no variation with time. So we can cancel this term here, okay? So in this case, we have the Laplacian of the temperature plus the term related to the heat source is equal to zero. And this is called Poisson equation. Third case, we simplify this equation a bit further. We say that there is no dependence with time and there is no heat sources. And therefore, the temperature only depends on the position. And in this case, 
This is called the Laplace equation. Okay. Okay. So how is this uh, equation expressed in different coordinates? So let's assume the general case when we can cancel its uh, heat uh, sources. If not, you will have to consider here, okay, this extra term. And we're going to express these equations in rectangular coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, and spherical coordinates. In the case of rectangular coordinates, we have to consider x, y, and z. In case of cylindrical coordinates, well, we have r, theta, and z. And if we have a spherical coordinate, we have r, the radius, and two angles here. Usually, what we're going to assume is that there is one dimension. So um, we only we're only concerned about one dimension. Um, if there is two dimensions, the solution will be the same, but the calculations will be more complex because we will have to consider two or three parameters when we do the integration. But usually what we're going to do is to focus on one dimension. So therefore, whoops. Uh, I shouldn't, okay, this is bad, sorry about that. And then, okay, so there is no variation, just one dimension, okay? Okay, let's now move on the uh, different, or how to apply this differential equation depending on the particular situations, we'll try to simplify this differential equation. And we're gonna see two different cases when we have this critical thickness of insulation, I will explain you what it means. And also how can we deal when we have internal heat generation? So I mentioned that we, in general, we're gonna see on that there is no dependence with time. That's why it is called a steady state, okay? So there is no dependence with time. And uh, let's begin with the easiest uh, case when we have no heat generation either. If you remember, we can simplify, let me go back. If we simplify the general expression, which is this one. If there is no dependence with time, we can cancel this term. And since we don't have heat generation, we can cancel this term either. And this is equal to zero, okay? So Laplace equation, which is the simplest uh, situation we can have. So let's assume that we have this Laplace equation. And well, depending on the geometry, we will have to integrate over that particular geometry. Either if we have a, a plane wall of a hollow cylinder of a hollow sphere. If we have, um, let's say, homogeneous geometry, then the integration will be feasible, will be relatively easy to do. If we have a more complex geometry, we won't be able to solve this second uh, differential equation that easily. So we will have to apply something different. So let's begin with the, uh, one of the simples geometry that we can have when we have a plane wall. Well, we apply the Laplace equation, we solve the, the equation, and because it's the second grade differential equation, we will have two different constants here. We will, we will need to know boundary conditions in order to um, know the values of these two constants here. These two values, for example, can be, or the boundary conditions can be the value of the temperature on one side of the wall and the other temperature in the other side of the wall. Um, uh, combining these two boundary conditions with the solution, we will be able to get the value of the temperature or the profile of the temperature through this plane wall. We can also simplify the Laplace equation before solving the differential equation. We can assume that well, there is only one dimension and we can apply the concept of thermal resistance the same way as we did in previous examples, in previous lecture, if you remember, we got to the conclusion of this table when we have different values or different expressions for the thermal resistance, when we have a flash lab, 
a cylinder or a whole sphere. It's up to you. Either you uh, integrate the differential equation over these known geometries or you can directly use the expressions here. It, it, you're going to get the same result. Okay? And if we want to use the concept of the thermal resistance, we know how to solve this. Uh, we use the electrical circuit analogy. Sometimes it's in serial, sometimes in parallel, sometimes it's a combination. But again, this is a simplified version of the di general differential equation when we have one dimension, when there is no dependence with time, and when there is no heat generation. And with the case of a very known or very, sim very simplified geometry. If we don't have all these uh, characteristics, then we will have to solve the, different, the general differential equation from the very beginning. Okay? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I shouldn't forget to mention this. Try to solve or take a closer look to example number one in chapter 17. Um, I think it's a good example. And it revises, it reviews some of the concepts that we already covered in previous videos. And it's an example how to apply the general equation to uh, simplify or simple um, geometries. Okay, um, let's now move to an important uh, definition for, for an engineer, which is the concept of a critical thickness of insulation. So let's imagine that you have a pipeline and there is like steam going through the pipeline. And well, the, the, the pipeline goes um, underground. Uh, let's imagine that it's in Buffalo. So everybody is, is aware of the cold weather in Buffalo. So you need to try to minimize the heat losses through the pipe. Um, one solution is to wrap up the pipeline uh, using an insulation layer. The insulation layer is uh, made up of material with a uh, thermal conductivity K very, very low. And that will try to minimize the heat losses. Uh, will try to minimize the heat rate going from the inside to the outside, for example, if this, uh, it is a very hot fluid. Okay, so we, we, we're going to try to maintain the temperature inside of the pipeline as much as possible. So what's the problem here? What's the issue? Well, the thing is that when we try to reduce the heat loss by adding some insulation, it's true that, well, uh, because this material, the thermal resistance, is very small, usually, typically, ideally, it's very small, that means that the heat through conduction, through the insulation layer, will be minimized right? But at the same time, look what happens, that if we put an insulation layer, when we talk about convection, that convection that will happen here, okay, we, we are getting a higher convection losses because the area, the external area, if we add insulation, is higher, is, is, is larger. Remember that Q due to convection is proportional to the area. So the larger the area, okay, so the larger the area, the larger the heat loss. So it's a balance. Again, when we put this insulation layer, we increase the conductivity resistance, which is good, so we are minimizing the heat loss, but at the same time, unfortunately, we are increasing the external area and therefore we are increasing the heat due to convection, which is not good at all. So we need to reach um, an optimum and that's what is called the critical thickness. So we're going to play around with the thickness of the insulation and we're going to try to get to the point 
where we increase conductivity resistance, but at the same time, we don't increase that much the area so that the Q related to convection will be too high. How can we do that? How can we solve this problem? Well, we, uh, we need to, of course, we need to apply the equation of conduction, which is this one, the simplify equation for conduction. Uh, remember that because this is a cylinder, we need to consider this area here. So the thermal resistance is a little bit different from the case of a flat slab or a, or a sphere. And the equation for the heat transfer due to convection is here, where the area, as we know, can change depending how thick the insulation will be. OK, so let's apply the concept of the electrical circuit. We know that the total heat that is going from outside to inside, for example, is equal to delta T over the two resistances in series, one related to convection and the other one related to conduction. So this is related to convection. OK, and this is related to conduction. So what is the thermal resistance due to convection? Well, we know that is 1 over the convective coefficient h times the area, right? So it's the convective coefficient h times the area, which is this one here, is the surface area, right? So for one dimension, it's going to be 2 pi the radius. 2 pi the radius. OK? What is the value of the thermal resistance due to conduction, R2? Well, we know that for a cylinder, it's going to be equal to the difference in the radius times the thermal conductivity and times this log area, which is defined by this expression here. So. Um, we combine these two uh, thermal resistances and you can see here that it's going to be a function of the radius 2. The radius 1 is going to be fixed, that's the, that's the radius of the pipeline. But the radius 2, the thickness of the insulation, we're going to try to find the value that will minimize the heat losses. And we're going to apply, OK, minimize Q. We're going to apply a mathematical uh, solution to this. So how can we get, how can we calculate the minimum or the maximum heat rate as a function of the radius 2? Well, we do the, um, the derivative equation of Q as a function of radius 2. And we say that it's equal to 0. And with that, we are going to assume that is, is, uh, the, that's the maximum or the minimum. That's going to be that what defined as the critical. So I don't want to spend a lot of time with the mathematical solution. You can take a closer look to your book. But if you do this, if you say that dq over dr2 is equal to 0, you will get to the point that the critical radius is equal to the thermal conductivity over the convective heat transfer coefficient h. So if you want to calculate this critical radius when you minimize the amount of heat, this radius has to be equal to the thermal conductivity of the insulation divided by the conductive heat transfer coefficient h. OK? OK, very quickly, um, this is going to be relatively easy, uh, and then uh, we're going to finish the video. So um, how can we handle when we have heat generation? Well, uh, if you remember the general differential equation for heat transfer, we define, well, it has three different terms here. There is one missing here that is the dependence of time of the temperature with time. 
right? So if we assume that this is equal to zero because this is a steady state, then we get to the Poisson equation. The Poisson equation, the temperature, will change with the position and we also need to consider that there is heat generation. In this case, we're not going to be able to directly integrate this equation. I mean, we can and we're going to do it, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that, the mathematical solution, I mean. If we have heat generation, well, we're going to assume that this heat generation is constant, so there is no dependence of the heat generation with the temperature of with time, but it's going to be constant. And if we consider a simple geometry like a flat slab, uh, we're going to see that instead of having just a straight line, remember when we don't consider any heat generation, well, in this case, we're going to get something like this, a curve. That will be the profile of the temperature. So let's go over the mathematical solution. So this is our starting point, is the Poisson equation. And um, then if we do the first integration of this equation, we're going to get the value of one constant here. If we do a second integration, okay, we're going to get two constants here. So we will need two boundary conditions. Um, one boundary condition can be, for example, that when we're in the center, the temperature is equal to T0, and we are, and if we are on the surfaces, uh, the temperatures can be Tw. Of course, the boundary conditions will be different depending on the, on the problem. Um, boundary conditions will be usually given as a statement. But what is important here is that, well, when we have heat generation, you see that the mathematical solution, it's a little bit more complicated. Still, it's feasible, it's doable. We will need two boundary conditions and then the general expression for the temperature with the position will be, uh, of course, considering this heat generation. If this heat generation is not constant, then we can have a problem. I mean, the solution, the mathematical solution could be a problem. You can still do it, of course, uh, but the integration would be a little bit more complicated than that. But usually we're going to consider that this heat generation is going to be constant over time. Okay? Okay, so please revise the piece of information that I gave you today. Especially uh, take a look to the critical uh, radius um, or critical thickness. Okay? And um, try to understand why we do what we do, why we say that the Q, the Q over dr is equal to zero. And let me know if you have any questions, okay? Okay, thank you so much.